In this section, I'll be introducing a number of properties of Fourier series. By knowing such properties, we can more effectively utilize Fourier series as a mathematical tool for problem solving. This slide summarizes a number of key properties of Fourier series. In this course, I'm only going to consider a subset of these properties, in particular the properties that are marked by stars. So on the subsequent slides, I'll formally introduce each of these starred properties and explain its meaning. The first property of Fourier series that I need to introduce is the linearity property. So let x and y denote two periodic functions with the same period. And suppose that x has the Fourier series coefficient sequence a, and suppose that y has the Fourier series coefficient sequence b. Then what the linearity property says is that we automatically know the Fourier series coefficient sequence of any linear combination of the functions x and y. In other words, the Fourier series coefficients of this function here that's highlighted, which is a linear combination of x and y, is given by the corresponding linear combination of the individual Fourier series coefficients a and b. In other words, a linear combination of functions produces the same linear combination of their Fourier series coefficients. The next property of Fourier series that I need to introduce relates to function symmetry, in other words, the evenness and oddness of functions. So for a periodic function x with the Fourier series coefficient sequence c, the following properties hold. The function x is even if and only if the Fourier series coefficient sequence c is even. And also the function x is odd if and only if the Fourier series coefficient sequence c is odd. In other words, the even and odd symmetry properties of x and c always match. Or another way to look at this is that the Fourier series preserves signal symmetries. The next property of Fourier series that I need to introduce relates to real valued functions. Now recall that a Fourier series is a representation for periodic functions that are, in the most general case, complex valued. Clearly a real valued function is a special case of a complex valued function, however, so one might wonder if anything special happens in the case that a real valued function is represented with a Fourier series. For example, do the Fourier series coefficients of a real valued function have any special structure? As it turns out, this is the case, and we have the following result. A function x is real if and only if its Fourier series coefficient sequence c satisfies a relationship of this form. In other words, the coefficient sequence c is conjugate symmetric. And this particular result is quite important. For example, it implies that half of the Fourier series coefficients are redundant. In other words, one half of the coefficients can be determined by the other half. Because, for example, if you know ck for all values of k greater or equal to zero, you automatically know the ck values for k less than zero. So in this sense, half of the coefficients are redundant in the case that the function x is real valued. Now from properties of complex numbers, we can show that this particular relationship here from above is equivalent to this pair of conditions here. And the way we obtain this pair of conditions is we first take the magnitude of both sides of this equation, which yields this equation here, which simply says that the magnitude of the Fourier series coefficients form an even sequence. And then we can take the argument of both sides of this equation to get this second relationship here, which is effectively saying that the sequence formed by taking the argument of the Fourier series coefficients is an odd sequence. Now the last comment I'd like to make with respect to real valued functions is that if x is a real valued function, this does not necessarily imply that the Fourier series coefficient sequence c is real valued. In fact, statistically speaking, this is not likely to be the case. In other words, if you randomly choose some real valued function x, and then compute its Fourier series coefficient c, it's most likely the case that at least some of the Fourier series coefficients will be complex but not real. So it's only in very special cases that x being real will result in all real Fourier series coefficients. At this point, I'd like to comment on two other forms in which a Fourier series can be expressed in the case of a real valued function. So consider a periodic function x with the Fourier series coefficient sequence c. And further, suppose that x is real valued. Earlier we saw that the Fourier series coefficient sequence of a real valued function must be conjugate symmetric. 
So using the fact that the Fourier series coefficient sequence is conjugate symmetric, we can re-express the Fourier series in two other forms, known as the combined trigonometric form and trigonometric form. So first let's consider the combined trigonometric form of the Fourier series. So the combined trigonometric form has this general form here that I have highlighted, where theta k is given by this particular formula down here. And the thing that you'll notice first of all is that all the quantities in this expression are real valued. It turns out that C0 always has to be real valued for a real valued function. Then we have the magnitude of some uh, value which is a real valued quantity and then cosine is a real valued function. So all the quantities involved here are real valued. In other words this Fourier series is expressed in terms of exclusively real arithmetic which is sometimes convenient. And effectively where this came from is we grouped together pairs of terms in the exponential form of Fourier series and grouped these pairs of terms into cosine functions. And what allowed us to do this was the fact that the Fourier series coefficients are conjugate symmetric. The other form of the Fourier series is called the trigonometric form. So that's this form that I've highlighted here where the alpha k's and the beta k's are given by these formulas down here. Again, it turns out that all the quantities in this expression are real valued. C0, it turns out, has to be real for any real valued function. Um, alpha k and beta k, if you look at how they're defined below, these quantities by definition are real valued. And then we have a cosine function, which is a real valued function, and sine function, which is a real valued function. So all the arithmetic that's happening in this expression here, this Fourier series representation, is real, real arithmetic which is often convenient. And effectively we use a similar sort of strategy to write things in this form. We essentially use the fact that the Fourier series coefficients are conjugate symmetric and we can reorganize the terms in the complex exponential form of a Fourier series and rewrite it in this form that's shown here. So again the, the advantage of these two forms, the combined trigonometric form here and the trigonometric form here, are that they involve only real quantities. So if you're dealing with functions that are real valued, sometimes it's nice to not have to drag complex arithmetic into what you're doing. And these two ways of rewriting Fourier series in the case that the functions that are involved are real valued are quite helpful for achieving this goal of essentially eliminating complex arithmetic and only requiring real arithmetic. Now with all of the above said, in this course we very rarely use the combined trigonometric form and trigonometric form for Fourier series. The reason for this is simply because we often need the generality of being able to handle complex valued functions. And again, these trigonometric forms that are introduced on this slide can only be applied in the case that the functions that are involved are real valued. At this point, I'd like to introduce a few other properties of Fourier series. So for a t-periodic function x with the Fourier series coefficient sequence c, the following properties hold. c0, in other words, the Fourier series coefficient with index 0, is the average value of the function x over a single period capital T. The function x is real and even if and only if the Fourier series coefficient sequence c is real and even. And lastly, the function x is real and odd if and only if the Fourier series coefficient sequence c is purely imaginary and odd. Now these three properties are often quite beneficial to know when working with Fourier series. And the first of these properties is especially useful as it attaches a particular physical significance to the Fourier series coefficient with index 0. Namely that this coefficient is the average value of the function x over a single period. At this point I'd like to consider an example in which we're going to prove the first property that's stated on this slide. In this example we're given a periodic function x with the fundamental period capital T and the Fourier series coefficient sequence c. And what we're asked to do is we're asked to show that the Fourier series coefficient with index 0, in other words C0, is simply the average value of the function x over a single period. So to do this we simply use the Fourier series analysis equation, which is the formula that appears in the square brackets here. And we're going to evaluate this at k equal to 0 because we want to find the 0th Fourier series coefficient. 
So when we do this, what happens is the exponential here effectively drops out. It just becomes equal to e to the 0, which is just equal to 1, which gives us this last line here. And this is just the definition of the average value of a periodic function over a single period.